The Small Business Show, episode 377, for Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we are always small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include banknovo.com slash SBS, where you can set up your free business banking account in just 10 minutes, and hunterdouglas.com slash SBS, where you can go and check out all their, they've got some special savings for you and everything on their fantastic blinds that are automatable. And we'll, we'll talk more in depth about each of those a little bit later here in the episode. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, I'm Shannon Jean. I'm excited about today's show. Yeah, you know Shannon, what? what do Elon <laughs> Musk, Julia Child, and career paths have in common? I, it's a natural trifecta. It is. And, and it's we're going to explore this episode. each of those. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> natural trifecta. That's yeah. what we go for on the on the small business show. There's. I, I will start this conversation by saying that I it, perhaps. I err too far on the side of keeping myself emotionally detached from partisan politics, but I honestly, I started the day not quite understanding all the backlash against Twitter going private and being owned and controlled by effectively Elon Musk and maybe effectively doesn't even need to be there. Yeah, I, I, I have come to understand some of the concerns and, and I actually agree with with some of them, but I, I don't I don't know. It, it, it seemed like there was a lot of knee jerk reactions to people. And I, I guess agree. maybe the, the yep. place I should start is I'm not I'm not I, I, I could be called an Elon Musk fan. I wouldn't call myself that uh, I used to th- be very cautious and wary and concerned about him until I saw him speak a few times and the more I encountered him, the more I realized I, I, I truly believe him at face value that he is not a malicious person. He's not uh, he's not out to to uh, hurt everyone else for his benefit. Y- you know, I, I really sure. think everything he does is for his vision of what would be better for the world. I, yeah, I, I do. That, that's a yeah. good point. And you have to see his vision, right? And I think that's, I think there are, uh, I don't know if concerns are the right word, but it's yeah. certainly a good discussion to talk about, is it healthy for billionaires or whatever, very wealthy people to own big media properties, but they all do anyway. You know, yeah, Carlos well. Slim owns the New York Times, Bezos owns Washington Post. Steve Jobs' wife, Lauren Jobs, owns The Atlantic and some other publications. Yeah. And so they are all in the business of, and, and I say this not in a negative way, but controlling the narrative or maybe being involved in yeah, the being narrative involved, in our be, society. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that's right. And, and that was the part I was overlooking, right? I mean, it, I, I think... If I if I look at everything that Musk has done and I and I listen to the way that he speaks uh, and I, I think he sees the world he's weird right definitely a, a oh, yeah. weird human definitely Thank but goodness. I think a big part of that is because he sees things the rest of us normal people do not right like how, how many of us even you know someone like me so I'm a I'm a a fifty year old man who who grew up as a digital native, right? I was online by the time I was 14 years old. So really not any different from my kids in that regard. And and that makes me a, like weird to, to my, you know, age related friends because most of them did not grow up online, right? You know, right. They, they came to it later in life. Uh, but even me, like, when I heard about X.com, which then became PayPal.com, I thought, why would somebody want to send money that way? Like we have ways to send money online is for, it's not for commerce. It's, it's for, <laughs> you know, it's for yeah. just exchanging information freely. Why would we want to do this? I didn't think we needed PayPal. None of us thought we needed PayPal until we had PayPal and then yeah, we couldn't live right. without it. Right. And the same thing has been true for everything else he's done in his career. He sees these things that to him are obvious solutions uh, or obvious problems that need to be solved. 
And the solution isn't terribly difficult. And so he goes and he solves the problem. And then in retrospect, we all look at him like, oh, thank goodness somebody somebody did that. You know, and it turns out it was him. And and he, he hasn't hit every mark exactly right. You know, he's he's not a perfect person or, or anything like that. He's made mistakes like anybody else. But there's a reason the guy's super rich. And it's it's because he's made a lot of smart decisions that have helped a lot of people that people, you know, want to use. And then, boom, the, you know, he profits from that. But I really yeah. don't think yeah. he's out to hurt anyone. I really I think of no. all the people that, you know, all, all the billionaires that are out there, I think he might be the most the one with with the, the most heart in it. However, I'm not sure that matters because I, I, I think he's. He, you know, he's probably on the autism spectrum or something like that, yeah. right? You, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm no expert, but it, it like yeah. that 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 fits for from what what I know, and 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 that and that's fine. There's obviously nothing wrong with that, but I don't know that having that much power consolidated in one person it, historically that has not worked out well. <laughs> right? Uh, like, I, I, well, well, I I think that he, he, in my opinion, it it. It, one one word sums up the benefit of having s- someone like him. If if his stated intentions are true, yes. which I do believe they are, based on stuff he said he was going to do and he's done. In in my opinion, that word is transparency. Right. You know, he wants to make the Twitter algorithm uh, open source. Yeah, he I like that. Wants to uh, document when someone is, uh, uh, you know cut off or banned or, or yeah. put in timeout or something on the, on the platform for something they said. And he wants to follow the laws for each country that Twitter operates in. And that sounds terrific. I think what we've had is, is on the left and the right. If you, if you're talking politics, partisan is, politics, because there's a difference politics. here, right? Yeah. 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 Partisan politics, too many unknowns and everybody pointing a finger at each other. I'm banned. I'm shadow banned. Yeah. I didn't know what I did. What happened? This. So if you bring transparency in, maybe it will bring some of us together. Because like I, for one, just stay off, stay, have stayed off Twitter because it is such, uh, I think, a nightmare. You know, <laughs> on, it's it's on interesting. It's, I, I, you know, you know, I am very much a part of like tech Twitter and yeah. and various other like music things and and, you know, bands that I like and and those sorts of things. And business Twitter, I, I, you know, we, in fact, we've had lots of conversations of, of threads that I've found on on Twitter that have been yeah. fantastic advice. That's I right. I hear people complaining about political Twitter and all of that. I see none of it. Yeah, and, that's which great. Is great. That's really good. It's good yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. But like I said, I am I am perhaps to a fault emotionally detached from partisan politics. I do not engage with any of that that stuff on Twitter. Uh, I, I, it's just not an interest to me. It's not a hobby to me. And I think for right. some, I don't mean to dismiss politics, but I think for some people take it too far and they make it their hobby yes. and, and that, well, or that's, their career. Right? Well, but that, that could, at least it's paying. But, but, you know? See, I didn't really understand the power of Twitter because it's like, oh, it, I always hear, oh, it's only a tiny fraction of people. Oh, and, no, no, you know, no. You know, <laughs> da, 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 and it's this and it's that. And it's not, you know, it's not the real world. But the people that are are amplifying the messages yeah. are all on Twitter. That's right. Right. Well, and, and, and the those, messages, I mean, Twitter is the one source that is routinely quoted by what I'll call the mainstream media, although I think that definition needs to be looked at a little more closely. But, you know, our, our mainstream media quotes Twitter as a source Yep. More often than any other non, and again, yes. I say non-mainstream yep. source and lumping Twitter in as a non-mainstream source, I think is is a mistake. But it, it's the only non-mainstream source that's quoted with regularity uh, on the mainstream media. So, no, it, and, and so it is mainstream as well. Media. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and such, right. And such granular analytic or uh, yeah. anecdotal methods, it, it yeah. drives me crazy. It's like, well, that's like one dude or one, you know what I mean? The, the, well, and you see it, you see it come up and like, well, Twitter users are very upset about what, like what? Oh no, you there know, was a and, thing and, this weekend, you know, I'm a fish fan. The, uh, I mean, yeah. I like fish, although Friday night I had some oysters that gave me food poisoning. So I, I didn't <laughs> the like other kind of fish. Yeah. But I like fish, yeah. the band with the pH. And on, uh, on Friday they did this show for Earth Day at Madison Square Garden. Now it was a, a, 
a rescheduling of their New Year's Eve run and and because they couldn't do new or they chose not to do new year's eve at madison square garden because of the omicron surge that was happening mm. and all that so yeah. they delayed it to april they do a four-night run they do a, uh, december 29 30 31 and then january 1st so the third night is always the new year's eve night it's a longer show and and so this friday night was their longer show and they always fish always does some something extra for new year's eve and uh, we don't know what they would have done for New Year's Eve this year mm. because, of course, they didn't play that show at Madison Square oh, yeah. Garden. But they did do something extra on Friday. It was Earth Day, and they turned Madison Square Garden into the ocean. They had oh, cool. dolphins and whales swimming around nice. while the band played. I, it. I, we weren't there. I, we we chose to to watch the live stream of it, not knowing what they were going to do, and it was like. It was more spectacular than what you would see at like a, a Pink Floyd tour with all the flying animals. But Pink Floyd does this for an entire tour and Fish did it for one night. Like they and they worked with a creative team to pull all this together. I have no idea how much they spent, but it totally I, un, I there's no way they weren't upside down on this evening. And they're totally OK with that. Like that's how that band is. But some one video in particular of that, that a fan just shot from within Madison Square Garden, you know, some two minute long video, if that. Yeah. Okay. Blew up on Twitter, like Barstool hmm. Sports. So suddenly now, Fish was in the mainstream, you, you know, and then this okay. is a band that generally people know their name, but nobody really pays attention to them, you, you know, other than people who care about the band. And now it's like it blew up. Barstool Sports retweeted it and 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 it went from there. Like, and then everybody retweeted it. And it's, you know, it's gotten hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. And now there's some discussion about, wow, I wonder what summer tour is going to look like for this band. Like, are people going to show up expecting swimming, oh, yeah. you know, because they ain't yeah, going to yeah. get it. It's not going to happen. This is a one off, right. folks. You know, <laughs> it'll never yeah, happen yeah. again. But the, but that's the impact of Twitter is it can change public conversation. So, I, you know, I, I was I was having this conversation with with someone who was very concerned. And it was it was to your point. It was, you know, here's this billionaire who is now in control of this thing. Much like other billionaires are in control of other similar things, let's say, sure, it, you know, and it's and and the question is, in general, is that a good thing for us? And the answer might be that, yeah, you know, Twitter in e Elon's hands is better than Twitter in anyone else's hands. Now, we have to be careful with, you know, just being OK with letting one person sort of who sees the world differently from us, which we've already right. maintained in control of something so powerful that, that that can lead to, you know, major it, historically, if we look back, you know, over the last hundred years, 150 years, that can be a problem, right? <laughs> you know, but it can also be a good thing. And our pets live that way, right? They, they mm -hmm. live yeah. under the, the, the wing of, of creatures that see the world differently than them. And they seem to live pretty well for the most part. Our pets do. So, but it's hard to say it, you know, I, I get the yeah. concern Good that discussion. one person, it, there are no checks and balances. I mean, essentially what's happening is Elon is saying, I'm going to choose, you know, that we're going to follow all the rules and all this, but it takes all the checks and balances out of it. Right. We, we, this is, well, I, I would say there are not, a, there, there are no checks and balances right now. Oh, I there's agree. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but, it, but it's in the get, hands of, of shareholders at least. So, so in theory, Twitter's board has to, mm, has to yeah. be at least sensitive to the public need. Otherwise they are not doing their job. Right. Cause the and job, that's why of the, they sold it. Right. The, well, they, the job, <laughs> the job of the CEO on the board is to, to increase shareholder value. You got it. That you is it, no yeah. longer the job of the owner of Twitter. It could That's be right. if he chooses, but he is judge, jury, and executioner well, no, he, of that he mission. Said, now, it, yeah, if you listen to and that, that TED talk he did was great yeah. in the interview. The, he, he said, we will have as many private shareholders as the law allows. Yeah. And he said there's something, up, I don't know, a thousand private shareholders or something like that. So perhaps he will have some sort of... Uh, you know... Maybe there will be checks and balances, sure. Yeah, and perhaps he will. And, and I, I, if he lives up to what he says he's going to do. And I think out of every human on the planet, he might, I think he might. I agree. And that, that transparency and, and they will live or die. You know, people are not going to stay on the platform if it just becomes a disaster. Um, but it, it, um, 
what I find very telling, and I'll, I'll admit some of my biases here, you'll pick up on them, <laughs> is that there is an entire class of people, like Mark Andreessen calls them the laptop class, which I really like, that, that terminology, that are very upset that uh, for this, the change and, and transparency and free speech. And it's, it's very interesting to, and, and if you go on Twitter and look up Mark Andreessen, you can see his, some of these threads that he's talked about why uh, free speech should be on the platform more. And, um, you know, there, there was another, uh, that, that is the right sets. That is the go part ahead. that worries me is, is him saying that there will be no censorship on the platform. But, I mean, I've moderated, I've been moderating online yeah. platforms since I was 15. Sure. And yeah, if you, right. if you have no moderation, the, he, it, it falls yeah. apart. Like it, it. So who's the guy? Yeah, who's the guy that that publishes that uh, Stratechery? Ben Ben Thompson. Yeah, Ben Thompson. He I, he had a recent article. If you search for it, you can find it. Yeah, about uh, how Twitter might solve that problem, and it was just to open the APIs up and let whoever wanted to create their own, like they used to have their own third party tr Twitter app. So if you wanted a certain type of moderation uh. in your Twitter feed. You just you could you could use a, a certain type of app if you wanted a, a certain type of experience it, that can you can create it and, and that could be there. So it may solve that problem. And like on the Web, you know, Twitter's just like, you know, whatever legal. That's true. There's no the moderation country. on the Web in general. No, uh, I mean, any it, given it, website might have their own moderation. Some. Uh, yes, you know, that's and, correct. And those are the ones that do succeed. The ones that don't fail. So if we treat yeah. Twitter like a. Like a, a, I mean, it's a platform, but if we treat it as just a medium, uh, yeah, like we should, do the web and you it. choose not to see it, but the algorithm would have to be, like you said, it would have to be fungible and, oh, and tweakable absolutely. by the users so yeah. that I and truly I, yeah. am, am able to avoid, like I can avoid all the politics as a hobby websites that are out there right now. Right. Because well, I just don't politics visit them altogether on Twitter. Right. Mm, I guess. Like well, I, you don't I, need to follow all those people. Yeah. But Twitter's algorithm will show you things it thinks you will engage yeah. with. So if if That's they true. knew That's that true. I would get emotionally hot about something, <laughs> no, yeah, they would show it to me. To you. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But they just like they've learned Evil over bastards. time that, wow, we've, <laughs> we've tried pushing this guy's buttons and they, 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 they yeah. there's no button. So we just we, we'll, we'll show him the fish whale again. That's a freaking amazing. Yes, yes, and then I'll watch yes. that, you know. And so it's like, all right, this guy, get him. more fish whales. Let's go. You know, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. And I think that there, uh, I do believe that the possibilities are very positive and let's, well, only time will tell. Yeah. We don't whether, know. We don't you know. know. I just thought it would be an interesting quick yeah. discussion to have. It became, it an, it it became a 16 yeah. minute discussion. So, you know, yeah, sorry, okay. but okay. Uh, we do have yeah. Julia child and career uh, uh, paths yes. to check off on our list. I also want to tell you all about our couple of sponsors here. If uh, And I'd love to do that right now if that works for you, Mr. Shannon Jean. Yeah, that's great. Let's do it. All right. Hey, you know, just because you're taking your business somewhere no one's ever gone before doesn't mean you have to go it alone. And you can get truly personalized business checking with our sponsor, Novo. Novo is powerfully simple business checking and Unlike the traditional banking model, Novo has no minimum balances, no transaction limits, and no hidden fees. Because instead of a one-size-fits-all approach, Novo is customized to your business to save you time and, most importantly, to free up cash flow with seamless integrations to Stripe, Shopify, QuickBooks Online, and more. And you can sign up for Novo for free and join the community of over 150,000 fearless people who are out there small businessing every day who have found the customizable business checking solution that admires their brave. Sign up for your free business checking account right now at novo.co slash SBS. Plus, Small Business Show listeners, you get access to over $5,000 in perks and discounts. So go to novo.co slash SBS to sign up for free. Novo.co slash SBS. Novo Platform Inc. is a fintech, not a bank. Banking services provided by Middlesex Federal Savings FA, member FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. 
and our thanks to Novo for sponsoring this episode. Next up, we're excited to talk about Hunter Douglas because if you love to live well, if you love to be perfectly at ease in comfort and in style, our sponsor Hunter Douglas can help you do just that with their innovative window shade designs with gorgeous fabrics and control systems so advanced they can be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal positions throughout the day. You got to go to hunterdouglas.com slash SBS so you can see the way that you can enjoy the view outside the window while protecting your privacy inside. You can learn about the superior insulation that these shades provide, keeping you warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and lowering your utility bills. And you can see the way these shades diffuse harsh sunlight to cast a beautiful glow across the room. And then, again, at HunterDouglas.com slash SBS, learn about how to tap into Hunter Douglas's PowerView technology. And that way you can set your shades to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy, and insulation morning, noon, and night. You're going to want to live beautifully, and Hunter Douglas is going to get you there. And right now, for a limited time, you, Small Business Show listeners, can take advantage of generous rebate savings opportunities on select styles. Visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS for details. That's HunterDouglas.com slash SBS, and our thanks to Hunter Douglas for sponsoring this episode. All right. Julia Child next or career paths? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Right. So I'm, I'm watching this uh, show, which I recommend. It's on HBO Max. Uh, it's called Julia. It's, it's a series about Julia Child. And, oh, yeah. You know, and develop her development and this kind of stuff. And, and um, as I'm watching this, I realize, you know, she even says in, in the series, I'm not a chef, you know. And I mean, the show that she created in the book, she was called The French Chef. She's like, I'm not French. I'm not a chef. But what she really was, was a small business owner. And... We talked, we've talked about like problem solving. We just did an episode called uh, having a problem solving mindset. Yeah. And she had to solve this problem that I, I was just very impressed with. And I wanted to, you know, share it here and um, just kind of call it out. So when she uh, was trying to get, you know, the show on and she went on, you know, as on a, on a different public television show and was very popular. And she's like, oh, we want to, let's do our own show. We'll do a pilot. And, these people at this uh, public um, TV network were not really keen on it. And so she just said, oh, well, hey, w what's the big problem? It's like, well, we just don't have the money in our budget and this kind of thing. And she just says, well, uh, how, how much is it going to cost? And it was, you know, I don't know, some number, not, not very expensive, but she says, great, I'll, I'll pay for it. Oh. You know, and this was like in the 60s or something. And uh, they, they kind of looked at her and she says, yeah, I'll, I'll write a check and I'll, I'll pay for the pilot and we'll see how it works. So pilot went everything, you know, it did really well, but there's still this massive resistance because on this public back then, I guess public television was way more educational yeah, uh, and, and things. And then uh, she sits down and, and the pilot's great. Okay. We're going to, do this thing, they present it, but it needs a, a pretty significant budget. And again, these guys use this tactic and say, you know, we just can't do the show because they don't want to do it. Because they don't, don't want to do it. Gonna, right. Yeah. yeah. They don't think yeah. it's going to work. They don't think their their people are going to be interested. And uh, she says, well, what, okay, we don't have it in your budget. And she just asked that question again. She's like, well, how much is it going to cost? And they, they gave her this number and it was significant. And she's like, well, I'll, I'll pay for it. I got I'll it. cover the cost. I'll cover it. And she didn't have a lot of money. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. and so that part of it, just looking at things from another angle of how to solve it. I, I, you know, I just want to call that out. But the other thing I want to call out is it, it just reaffirmed. I had this concept that I never worry about the money. Hmm. If the deal or the opportunity is good enough, the money will follow. And if the deal or the opportunity or the idea isn't good enough, you won't be able to get the money. So if, you know, yeah, that, I, that's I always, fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, I eliminate the money problem because that's, that's how, when I started buying things and doing things, I, people were like, oh, we don't have the money to buy all that. And I was like, well, if it's a good enough deal, shouldn't we be able to get the money? I got you. That's it. Right? This is interesting because I, if you watch uh, Howard Stern's private parts, right, which was the documentary yeah. that they yes. did. One of the things he has said and and how he got his career off the ground is he said, I made the decision to never invest my own money if I couldn't convince people that what I was going to do was going to work. 
then it probably wasn't going to work. He had a, he had the completely opposite yeah. approach. It was, yeah. it, you know, if, if I can't convince you to spend money on this, then how am I going to convince people to listen to this right now? Yeah. That's not well, it's me, kind me, of the same idea. Right? It, it I mean, is, but it's, it's, it's a, like the, up, it's upside down, right? Like it's, yes. it's two sides of the same coin. Uh, but yeah. this is, she just believed that this was going to be good. Whereas Howard proved that it was going to be, I mean, they both proved it was going to be good. <laughs> Cause right. it worked. She didn't have the money. Oh, it, it, she that, didn't. That's, that's no, oh. that's the point. She oh. didn't have any money. I see. <laughs> so no she money. wasn't. She, okay. I, when you said she didn't have very much money, I thought she was spending everything she had. She went and raised the money elsewhere. Well, she spent it. She spent all her own money to do the pilot. Got and it. She was just, okay. everybody loved it. But these, these kind of traditional, uh, pr- producers on these, yeah, yeah. just weren't having any of it. Yeah. And, and so to get over that obstacle, she just had to do something, you know, astounding and to say, oh, I'll just pay for it. And here was a, you know, she was, yes, she was an author, but it was a cookbook. And these guys just kind of really looked, they didn't hold her in high regard, let's sure. say, sure. Uh, for her business acumen. But it turned out she was a fabulous businesswoman Interesting. Uh, and, and obviously wildly successful. Obviously, and, yes. <laughs> uh, and so I just thought, you know, just keeping that, that problem-solving mindset all the time. And, you know, it's kind of hyperbole, but don't worry about the money. You, you'll figure it out. You'll if figure the idea, out the money. No, it's true. If the product, if the deal is good enough, yeah. you'll figure out the money. The hardest part in my uh, career of, you know, buying and selling and being a merchant, the hardest part has always been finding the deal. Yeah. So if you found the deal, you sure enough could find the money. <laughs> and and I always used to make, I, people would call me and they'd say, well, how many, what, should we do this? Should we buy it? And I'm like, I would always say, buy it all. Let's buy it all, you know, yeah. and it's a little harder. You can't do that quite as much as you used to be able to. But, no, uh, well, not in. But it works. I mean, it depends on the the venue. Depends on the product. Yeah, yeah, depends yeah on exactly. What, what it is. Yeah, the deal, all this stuff. So I, I thought it was worth sharing. Yeah. It's, again, uh, I, I highly recommend it if you have HBO Max, um, watch it, and uh, it's 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 a really good telling of this of this story. Yeah. No. That okay. All right. It's on. It's on my list now. And hopefully cool. it's on yours out there, folks, too. If there's ever a, a show that you folks are watching that you think has good business lessons, either good business lessons to follow or not to follow, let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. There's there's a lot to be learned from. I mean, this is a, you know, docudrama series, I suppose. Yeah. It's, you know, mostly right. historically accurate, you know, those sorts of things. And there's obviously we're big fans of documentaries here. We just spent uh, two episodes talking about them last month. But uh, whether it's a documentary or or even just a you know work of fiction, if there's good lessons, let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. We'd uh, we'd love to hear from you about it. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's. I want to talk about career paths. You mentioned in a, a you know we were talking last week uh, about uh, you know managing people and and you said make sure to have a clear path towards advancement, career development, and increased salary for your people. And as a small business owner. This is something I don't know how to do well. I, I, I mean, I've, you know, I always try to give give people, you know, a, a fair wage. I try to increase that wage when we can, especially if their performance is, you know, increasing right. and all of that good stuff. But advancements that that whole idea of that in a small business environment, it's hard. Right. You know, because there's, there's, there's only so many of us, uh, you know, and you can <laughs> yeah, have my right. job someday. Like, I'm, I'm not opposed <laughs> to that. Yes. But but, yeah. you know, then you got to make sure that that's that that's the smart move for that person. Not everybody wants, you know, wants my job. I'm not yeah. sure I'm qualified. There's different, to have my job. There's different yeah. ways you can do this. Yeah, I think that's the there is no set thing. And sure. especially small companies with just a few employees, it, it can seem like, well, I don't know. What do you do? But I, I'm going to talk about some ways you can do that and, and get around those obstacles. Yeah, Cause and, I want to keep and, my, I want to maintain my, as you like to call it, my talent stack, right? My, 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 yeah. my company's talent stack, just not well, my personal talent stack, but I want to, I want to expand that. And I want to keep my, my best employees, which at least in my companies are my only employees. I, I don't keep dead weight around. <laughs> so if, yeah, if, and, you know, if they're also, here, they are my best employees. I want to keep them around. Yes. Yeah. And the, what happens with a career path is you also increase your company's knowledge base, which may even be more important than the talent stack. That is so because true. Because 
right? You need that. I mean, a good knowledge base, if you, you know, using that terminology, something you could search and just come up with any answer. That's what employees that have moved up, you know, the guy that was in the warehouse or the, the woman that, that started answering the phones and is now your CFO or your yeah. whatever, uh, your accountant or, you know, these kinds of things, but you can move them along with you as your business grows. And even if you don't want to grow your business, there's ways to do this. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it today. And it's great because I love taking a deep dive back into these topics. Um, because it reminds me how little I know about a lot of it and how, <laughs> but I do know some things about it and yeah. uh, good. No, good no. You, yeah. We, well, we all have things to share, but I, I do. I think, I think you've got some, some good things to, to say about this. So, yeah, so it's good. I know we've, we've touched on a few of the, the reasons to do this. Are there, are there any that we haven't touched on? Uh, you know, I, I think we're all sold on the concept of, yeah, we want to yeah. retain our, our, our best. We, w- or we want to figure yeah. out ways to retain our best. Is there, is there anything specific that we're missing that we haven't identified before we get into how we're going to do this? Yeah, sure. Uh, one thing is, you know, people always want to work someplace that where they can have a sense of purpose, right? Yeah. It, it and yeah. you know, at least your best employees typically do. So that career path can help with that sense of purpose. What am I working towards each day? Uh, I think that's really important. Another thing is that, and I'm going to use this term here, uh, it having career paths and, and ladders, you can call them too. I like that term a lot. I like that term, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it helps you identify the slackers and the achievers. And both of them are really valuable, right? And, and when I say slacker, it's, they just may not want to go up that, you know, how far they could go up on that ladder. And that might be okay because along the way here, as you're talking about advancement and advancement, you, you, you have to remember about that. You know, you mentioned this term a lot, the the Peter principle, right? Yeah. You don't want to advance somebody up to the point where they're just not good at that position because that's a hard thing and you can lose people that way. You you always Um, lose people that way. Well, yeah. And, and sometimes you are then forced to lose people that way. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. nowhere else. Yes, that's right. It, you know, you have to let them go. I, I, my dad worked at a place for a while called the Danbury Mint. And when he left, it was because he chose to leave. He left the area uh, where, where it was. They, they make all kinds of collectibles, trinkets. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yep. Oh, yep. great. So they're in Danbury, Connecticut, hence the Danbury Mint. They had a, po- I think I'm getting the right company here. But I'm pretty sure I am. They had a policy that they never would let anyone go for uh, not performing well. They saw that they, they had a long hiring process. So they knew that if somebody was in the company, they felt confident that that person could bring value to the company. And it was up to the company to find the right position I for them. I love that. So they would advance yeah. people and sometimes mistakenly, you know, yeah, into sure. a position, but they were not too proud to say, Hey, this is not the right position for you. We want to try you over here. Now they were a company of, I don't know, at least 50 employees. It, it might be, it might've okay. been 150. A little you know. easier at that point. But yeah. it's easy. Yeah. There's more places to, to test and put people there. But yeah. it created an atmosphere where everybody was felt free to make mistakes, felt free to experiment. They nobody everybody knew you weren't going to lose your job. I mean, I think yeah, if there was huge. some sexual harassment, or, like there, oh, there were right, reasons right, you were right, going to lose your job. Anomaly. Yeah. Yes, but but just not being in the right role was not a reason you would lose your job, which in many companies is exactly the reason you lose your job. If you're the wrong yeah. person for the role you're in. Oftentimes you're let go. It's just how it works. Well, and that, yeah, and that's such a good point is that, and I, and I didn't even think about it, but building that into the advancement process yeah, and having that clear conversation is, is a, just a great thing not to miss and to, to tell your people, hey, w- this is how you get up there. But, you know, if you find yourself in a position that either A, it turns out you really don't like it, or B, your your set of talents isn't good for that here's plan B and here's how we handle that so that they don't come to you one day and say, you know, I just don't like this job. I'm going to leave. 
right. or you have to go and tell them you're no good at the job. Uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, that you, here's thing. your two so, weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. that, that is really important. And maybe the most important thing you remember from this episode yeah. is have a, a way to offboard them, if you will. Right. Uh, from a position that it turns out is just not for them. That's great. Right. No, it, yeah, it's great. Yeah, if if your company is is wide enough, uh, workflow workforce wise, yeah. to be able to do that, that's a it's it's a powerful thing because it creates an air of loyalty uh, in a huge way. You know, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. The um, yeah. and and oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, well, I was gonna, I have a couple more little things. Okay, yeah, go go through the little things. I was going to get into the why, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, talking talking about the why is you you get to create what is, you know, a multi-generational workforce if you do this right. For sure. Because people, people stick around longer. Yeah. And, you know, obviously it's a competitive advantage when people know that they can get up and everything. But one thing that as I was kind of reading up, I was reminded that as an owner, if you have career paths and you can be pushing, you know, or helping people climb that ladder, it allows you more flexibility. You know, we always say you don't have flexibility, you don't have freedom because you're just, you know, tied to these companies and stuff, but you do have lots of flexibility. So if you can move people into these other positions and they're used to that, they learn more, they, they get better at decision-making, it's going to give you more flexibility to have more time to either make your company better, grow it bigger, or start another, another business. So, yeah. um, don't forget that flexibility is part of the equation because you have to get something out of this too. It's not just about, Oh no, the know, company needs to succeed and, and yeah. grow and, and thrive well, you personally yeah. as an owner. That's fair. You know, you, you're going to, you're going to get that out of there. Yeah. So, all right. So let's yeah. get into the how of, of this, right? Because now we've talked about the benefits. We've talked to some of the, how one, one example of the, how that's not really functional in most businesses. Uh, but the, let's, let's get into this in a more generic sense. You know, what, where, yes. where do you, where do you start? How, how do you lay you, the foundation yeah. for this? Yeah. Yeah. And if you've heard this, if you've listened to the show for a while, you know, we're huge fans of the E-Myth, uh, the book that needs to be, you know, everybody needs to read that. And one of the founding principles of that book is the org chart, your organizational chart that you should build Early on, even if you're the only one, even if you're the only name that gets put in all those boxes, yeah, um, you should create that org chart. And even if you know you have one, two people or whatever, because everybody wants to look at, you know, here's the company. It's a, it, you know, uh, a visual representation of the company. And maybe you can make it more interesting and add some artistic uh, things to it, or you know, I don't know, uplifting things, or make it look better than just a. A Microsoft, you know, org chart. Thing sure. With a bunch of boxes. Sure. Um, yeah. Have you fun with it. it. If it's especially have if it's just it. you. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Or yeah. maybe a, you, you print a big poster and you let people write on it in the break room or something. But um, that org chart should be posted publicly. It, it shouldn't just live on your computer, um, you know, so people can look at it and see, oh, you know what? This person here, and maybe you even have, you know, come think of it, uh, historical versions of it that people could look at and say, oh, you know, D uh, Dave started here and look where he's now, you know, because yeah. that's, it's just a, a really good thing that they can see. Oh, that's interesting. Keep it updated. Yeah. Keep it current. And then maybe you're, maybe you have a, a dream org chart, right? Or something you call a, a aspirational org chart where you talk about, we'd like to start this new thing or a new division. And these are all the, the, the slots we'd need to fill to build out that. I like, like that idea. I like the yeah, aspirational org chart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and I guess that's kind of what it is in, in, in essence, if you're, you know, cause you're, you're putting yourself in every bucket, you're putting yeah. yourself, <laughs> it's pretty aspirational, <laughs> but like a tech store, you know, when, uh, we wanted to start a parts business and, you know, we were, we were parts consumers for, you know, decades. Sure. So we didn't, we, we knew a lot about the parts, but we didn't know about selling those parts. And so it was, we had to create a whole new division and I didn't do this, but I could now looking back, I could say, wow, you know, we could have, added another branch to this org chart that we had and say, this is how we would build this out. And these are the people that would do it. Um, and and I, I'll be the first to admit, yeah. I definitely lost people because I didn't do this. All these things I'm talking about. Oh, I, yeah, definitely of course. Lost people that have left because I didn't do a good job at this. Yeah, you know? no. And, and one thing I, I, of course, like that's, I mean, that's how it goes. And, and you're going to lose people 
anyway uh, yes. for reasons that are not your fault. But but of course, if you can mitigate the reasons that are, then you have a better chance of keeping people, uh, especially the people that you want to keep. And I've you know, I've definitely done this. I need to be more intentional about it, but I've definitely done this sort of as a uh, just as a, a an evolutionary thing where I've had like, like Jeff, who's been with us for 17 years, almost 18 years. He, uh, it, which is amazing, you know, but he didn't, he, he does sales for us now. He didn't come in, uh, to do sales. He came in to do sales support and he was just helping out with all the campaigns, but we noticed, well, wow, he's doing great with all of the clients that he's working with. They like him. And so we experimented a little bit. It was like, Hey, you know, that one's coming up for renewal. You, you seem to have a good rapport with him. No reason to rock that boat. You want to you want to talk to him about renewal? And he needed to be coached through it a little bit, or he wanted to be coached through it a little bit. And so it was like, okay, yeah, we'll show you what to do. No problem. That took a lot more work than it would have yeah. to just step in and do the renewal. But, you know, that kind of work generally can pay off down the road. And, and it definitely yep. did because it got to a point where he not only became comfortable doing it, but he became good at it. He has his own style. Sometimes he drives me crazy with his style because it's not exactly what I would do. But you know what? That's because we're different people and he's successful and he's effective and it's totally fine. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's it, you know, but so we created a position so that he could move into that position. And, and that I think you, you know, with the aspirational org chart, that the idea of that is creating the position before uh, you have a, a need for it or a person to fill it. It, it. Feel free to let your org chart also be fluid in the way that, you know, if you realize that you've got somebody that would be good at a thing that you're not currently doing, maybe create that role and let them build it because yeah. that can be yes. a great Make them way. part of the process, right? Make them part yeah. of the process. Yeah. O yeah. Ownership yeah. over it and all of that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, essentially, that's what we've done with Sadie and, and her position yes. will continue to evolve because because of her skill set and what what she brought in when she came here and what she learns while she's here, she will continue to evolve. It's, I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, we we have we have a lot to talk through here. I, I want to I want to ask you some questions about uh, how to craft job descriptions, and then how to take those people that have been at your company a little while, and instead of it being like I just described, you know, I had to be the one coaching Jeff, and so uh, you know, mm -hmm. but how do I teach my people to coach each other? So that I don't even have to be involved in that process and let the company kind of run itself more and more. I wonder we're at we're at like the forty two minute mark here. I wonder if we should we should sort of extend this into another episode, Shannon, so that we I can, think that we can keep doing this. Be worthwhile. Then we wouldn't okay. have to rush through it. I want to talk. This is about a good spot to to sort yeah. of pause this conversation because we've we've yes. talked a little bit about the why and the the big picture of how, and we can dive even deeper next week to go. Uh, to go into the, the the nuts and bolts of it. And that gives you folks some time because these days we are recording these episodes uh, right before you hear them. So let us know feedback at business show.co. And we will, uh, you know what, if, if there's more to this that you want to hear, you're going to hear it next week, but, uh, yep. but you've got a week to ask us questions. And of course, sure. if, if the show has already come out, uh, next week's show has already come out, and you're, this, you're hearing this for the first time. You can always ask us questions. Feedback at businessshow.co. It's how it works. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm looking forward to because this stuff is hard, and and I, there's some tricks to it, and some hacks that can make it easier uh, on you because it is difficult to get set up, especially once you're going or, or in the beginning. But once you get this system in place, it can be really. Uh, transformational for your your small business and so i look forward to having you come back and hear uh, part two yeah we'll we'll um, dig deep we don't want to rush through any of this i think that's i think it's a good idea yeah all right folks thanks for hanging out with us we look forward to hanging out with you next week thanks for checking out our sponsors of course as i as i said during the episode we have banknovo.com slash sbs and hunterdouglas.com slash sbs go check those out in the meantime Cogitate on this. Let us know what you think. Feedback at businessshow.co. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. <laughs>